I'm Rashmi Tabat. I'm a Chief Security Architect responsible um, in RSA, the Security Division of EMC. Um, really um, looking at how we can implement security in the cloud. So working with a lot of customers and service providers in terms of uh, people helping them in their journey as they move to the cloud uh, from a security perspective, what are the sorts of things that they need to think about. An interesting um, question that we get asked all the time is, you know, um, is the public cloud secure and is the private cloud more secure? Um, the, the answer is it depends. Um, most we would advise most customers not to put sensitive data into the public cloud. Uh, public cloud services are really there um, as, as, as we see it for, for individuals really to access. But from a business perspective, um, it would, you, know, you would look at using either a private cloud. Um, however, most organizations will use a hybrid cloud, so they'll actually have a private cloud, but actually buy some services from an external service provider. In that environment, um, you, all your security policies that you have today already should apply. So if you're following best practices in your physical or your current environment, then you should really take those practices with you into the cloud. And actually, going into the cloud is probably an opportunity to improve your security rather than, um, you know, a, a, a security seen as an inhibitor to the cloud. But actually, it can give you lots of benefits if you are doing the right things, if you're following best practices. So it's nothing new. It's all doing all the good things that you would be doing today in an environment, but moving that into the cloud. So when you think about storing data in the cloud, um, then depending on who you are, it's always a challenge because um, there are different regulations that would apply to the type of data that you're storing. So for example, if you're storing um, uh, PII information, which is uh, personally identif identifiable information or citizen data, um, as governments call it, then if you're trying to store that information in the cloud, then there are EU laws which say that you can only store that cloud within EU member, member states or within um, some other safe harbour countries that have been verified by the EU that you, know, you can actually store the data in, the, in those places. So the challenge will come in the cloud is that if you're storing data, the whole nature of the cloud is so if you put data in the cloud, you don't know where it is. So if you're going to put data in the cloud, then you're going to have to provide some proof. So you're going to have to be able to prove that you are storing data in the cloud, but it's actually sitting in Belgium, so you are you know, within the EU. So there are lots of different regulations that will apply, but it really depends on the type of data and then where you can store that. Um, absolutely, I think uh, mobility um, is a challenge, um, and mobility is a different angle to the cloud because you know, we talk about the cloud and being able to move data around, but actually now the individuals who access that data are moving around as well. So you almost have a many-to-many -many environment that you need to work with. So really looking at, um, from a security perspective, looking at uh, policies that actually um, travel with that piece of data so that you can apply those policies to that individual. So from a mobility perspective, it doesn't really matter where that individual is and what cloud service they're accessing. So you've actually got um, those um, policies or those, those security controls that travel with it. And absolutely, um, it does make enterprises more vulnerable. Um, and a really simple um, thing to think about here is that the more seams you have um, in an environment, the more vulnerabilities you have. So you know, if you think about um, the mix of the cloud and mobility, then actually there are lots of different themes in that whole chain, if you like. And then the more seams you have, every seam is a vulnerability. So absolutely, that's something you would need to think about. So we're actually talking uh, to a lot of cloud service providers, and it depends um, what you mean by a cloud service. There are lots of um, service providers today who offer infrastructure as a service and have been for a, a while. So that's kind of the easiest element of that, if you like, and you know, the, 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 those services that have been there. I think the challenge for service providers today is being able to offer services where their customers can audit them. So being able to prove um, to your uh, customer that, that, that you can be trusted with that data. Trust becomes really important in that relationship. Um, and the way you get trust is by two things, by control and visibility. So um, as a customer uh, of a service provider, I would want to see where my data is. Um, and then I would want to be able to control that data. So if I know that that data can only be stored in a certain country, for example, I want to have that control but I want the flexibility of using a service provider to provide that. And from a service provider's perspective, they're doing everything they, they can to make sure that they are deploying those services because it will help them to deploy more enterprise customers in that environment. So um, it's a win-win situation for both environments. The, the, challenge of, the, the other challenge, of course, is there aren't any standards. 
So, um, you know, there are auditing standards for service providers, but not from a security perspective. You know, there are best practice guidelines like the Cloud Security Alliance, but there isn't really a security standard that gives a service provider a tick mark to say, you know, we are certified for security. So that trust is something that's going to have to be built on.